but this one tells us what to do. So it says by writing y equals arc sine x as x equals sine y. Use implicit differentiation to show that dy by dx equals that. So we're going to differentiate this implicitly. We're differentiating both sides with respect to x. So differentiating the left hand side goes to one. Differentiating the right hand side, well, you know if you differentiate sine, you get cos. So I get cos y. And because it's in terms of y instead of x, implicitly I need to times it by dy by dx because of the chain rule. Divide through by that cos y to get an expression for dy by dx. And then it's no different from doing it um, by doing dx by dy here. So now we need to write cos y in terms of sine y. So I'm going to use cos squared y plus sine squared y equals 1, or more usefully, cos y equals root 1 minus sine squared y. Substitute that in, so that's 1 over root 1 minus sine squared y. And then finally, you know from the start of this that um, sine y is equal to x. So this is 1 over root 1 minus x squared. So the results are up here on the top right is the ones that are given on the formula sheet. Um, so let's have a look at example two. So example two asks us to differentiate arc sine x squared. So this is like in a bracket here. Um, and it asks us to do it two ways. So it asks us to do it by implicit differentiation and by using the chain. So to differentiate it implicitly, what I'd do is I'd take sine of both sides and write this as x squared equals sine y. Differentiate both sides with respect to x. So x squared differentiates to 2x. Sine y differentiates to cos y. But remember, because in terms of y, I need to times by dy by dx. Do it implicitly. <laughs> Divide through by the cos y to get dy by dx on its own. And then we'll do what we did before. So you can write cos y as um, root 1 minus sine squared y. And then sine y is equal to x squared. So sine squared y is equal to x to the 4. So this is 2x over root 1 minus x to the 4. Okay, that's final. Using the chain rule instead, if we start off with y equals arc sine x squared, using the chain rule, we differentiate the inside of this function first. So differentiating x squared goes to 2x. Then we differentiate the outside of the function. So differentiating arc sine, this result here from the formula sheet that we can just quote. So that's 1 over root 1 minus x squared. But instead of x, we've got x squared inside the arc sign. So that's x squared squared, which is where that x to the 4 comes from. And this just is the same result as we did before, but with a lot less work. Then I think for example 3. So an example 3, we're going to have to use the chain rule and the quotient rule and the standard result for differentiating arc turning. So it's important that you be clear on what's happening on all of this. So I'm going to differentiate this using the chain rule and the quotient rule rather than doing it implicitly. You could do it implicitly if you want. So to differentiate this function, I have to use the chain rule first. So I have to differentiate the inside of this function first and then differentiate the outside. Differentiating the inside of this requires the quotient rule. The quotient rule is on the formula sheet if you need it, um, but hopefully you've done it enough times that you don't need it. So for the quotient rule, you differentiate the top. Differentiating 1 minus x gives you minus 1. Multiply by the bottom, so that's 1 plus x. Then minus, differentiate the bottom. 
multiply by the top. So if you differentiate the bottom, you just get one multiple minus x. And then that's all divided by the bottom squared. So remember what we've got here, this fraction, this is just differentiating the inside of this function. I then have to differentiate the outside of the function. So differentiating the outside is differentiating arc tan. The result for arc tan is one uh, over one plus x squared. But instead of x, I've got this whole fraction thing in here. So it's one minus x over one plus x all squared. <laughs> Um, so it's not very nice. Let's tidy this up a little bit. <coughs> so expanding out the top, I'll get minus one plus, sorry, minus one minus x. And then uh, minus one plus x. So these x's cancel out. And I'll leave it in brackets. Generally, you want to leave things factorized rather than expanding them out. This thing here, I'm going to times the top and bottom for this fraction over here. I'm going to times the top and bottom through by 1 plus x all squared to get rid of the fraction in the fraction. So times by 1 plus x squared. So it's squared. On the top, I'll get 1 plus x squared. On the bottom, I'll get 1 plus x squared plus 1 minus x. Okay. Hopefully you spot something else that will cancel. So I've got 1 plus x squared and 1 plus x squared. On the top, top and bottom, which cancels there. And now I'm looking at these things over here. Bottom of this fraction, and I'm thinking, well, if I expand this out, some of this is going to cancel out. So I am going to expand these ones now. So here I've just got minus two on the top left over. Everything else is gone. Uh, over there, if I expand these out, I get one plus two X plus X squared. One minus two x plus x squared. Two x's cancel out. On the top, I get minus two. On the bottom, I get two plus two x squared, and I can cancel a factor of two, and end up actually being quite nice. For this one, um, we've been given y equals 4 arc sine x minus 5. That minus 5 is outside of the arc sine, obviously, because there's not a bracket in there. Uh, and it says, find the exact value of the x coordinates of the stationary points of the curve and determine their nature. You should always write down something about stationary points and divide by dx equal to 0. That offers, um, so divide by dx equals 0. A stationary point. And then we're just going to start off by differentiating this. Now, actually, this differentiation is quite all right because there's no, don't need to use a chain rule, don't need to use a product rule or a quotient rule or anything like that. So differentiating arc sign, I can quote the result from my formula sheet. It's just four times one over one root one minus x squared. Differentiating five x just. I'm setting this equal to zero and solving it. Right, so I'm going to take the five across. I'm going to times up by the root one minus x squared, and I'm going to divide by the five at the same time. Perfect. Perfect. I'm going to square both sides to get rid of the square root. So I can six again over twenty-five. X squared. Add the x squared minus the 16 over 25 across the g9 over 25. Yeah, definitely. 
it's worth checking if both of these are OK and. Um, they will be because it's got X squared inside this square root here. Um, there's no problem with that. Yeah. It only has to the X squared association point, so we don't need to go back and work out why. Obviously, you could by substituting them into here and using the LM point of the arc sign. But it's also asked us to determine the nature. So to determine the nature, we're going to need the second derivative. So second derivative, I need to differentiate this dy by the x expression. Yeah. Um, there's a couple options. You could use the quotient will differentiate that, but I'm not going to. Instead, I'm going to write this dy by dx as 4, 1 minus x squared to the minus a half. Then you've got minus 5. And differentiate that way using the chain rule instead. So differentiating this, if I differentiate the inside, I get minus 2x. I've got the 4 from the outside already. And then differentiate the outside bracket and times by the power and minus 1 from the power. Differentiating the 5 just disappears. I've got minus 2 times minus half, so they cancel out. So you just get 4x. 1 minus x squared and still 2. And then to determine the nature, I substitute these in. So when x is 3 fifths, e squared by o dx squared equals 4 times 3 fifths, 1 minus 3 fifths. Squared to minus 3 over 2. Did you work this out in your calculator? Oh, there's three bits. Oh, minus two. Seventy-five over sixteen, which is positive. Make sure you say that it's greater than zero. So x equals three is a minimum point. If we do the same for minus three fifths, I am going to show the substitution. But actually, all that's going to change is it's going to be the negative of this because minus three fifths squared is the same as three fifths squared. So this is just going to be minus 75 over 16. I mean, if you're going to put it in your calculator, you could just go back and change what you've put in there. Uh, so minus 75 of 16 is less than zero, but x minus 3 is a maximum. 